Hey guys, so this is the uh, part one of our linear functions review. Uh, it's the fourth uh, module in our Algebra 1 skills unit. And it, it's all about linear functions. So by the end of this video, you're going to be able to determine the rate of change or slope of a situation and graph uh, in a variety of ways linear functions. So there's three different ways. I'm going to discuss all three. So the first thing we need to talk about is rate of change. You guys know it as slope, uh, but it's definitely more than just slope or rise over run. This is used in physics and science. Uh, even driving down the highway, you use rate of change for miles per hour, that sort of thing. So uh, in this example, we give you a table, OK? Now, we always have things, all right? always situated x, y, first thing. And then this is going up, okay, the first data set went up 26, this went up 19, this went up 19, this went up 20. Okay, so that's how the x's are changing. The y's are going up about every one hour or 60 minutes, I'll say one hour every one hour, okay? One hour, one hour. So the rate of change is how much is it changing over time? So um, in this case, okay, it's going up about 20 degrees per hour, right? So you can say, all right, it's 20 degrees for every one hour or every one hour it's 20 degrees. It depends. Usually we we say that the time is always on the bottom, okay? Uh, miles per hour, uh, that sort of thing. So uh, this would be the correct answer for that, 20 degrees per hour. But each time you create a table, all you got to find is the change from one step to the other and then make a fraction out of it. Now, what you're used to is more like this, where we give you two points of data, and it could be anything, and you have to find the slope of it, or rate of change. And this is the slope formula, the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So first step is 5 minus a negative 1 over negative 4 minus 2. Now, Remember, it's the minus, so minus, minus, plus there. So we get 6 over negative 6. So the slope, or m, is negative 1, because we always have to reduce slope to the lowest terms. So that's if you're given two points. If you're given a graph, all you have to do is rise over run. Rise over run. OK, the rise is the up-down movement. The run is the how far right, OK? So you always read graphs left to right. If you choose two points, OK, you want to choose corners. Key is corners, OK? I went down one over two, OK? So since I went down one, that's a negative over two. All right, so that's my slope for that. And you can complete the next practice problems for that. Uh, what I want to talk about is this second one here. Okay, so if I plug this in, okay, I got 4 minus 4 over 3 minus 6. That's 0 over negative 3. The slope of that is 0. Anytime you have a slope of 0, think of it as like a flat piece of, uh, piece of land, okay, or a floor. That slope is 0 because it's not rising whatsoever. That is what we call a horizontal line. Now, the reverse of that is if we have something like negative 3 over 0. If you plug it into the calculator, it's not going to come up with a good answer. That's where we say it's undefined. Okay. Every time you say undefined, think of it as a cliff. It's a straight drop. Okay. Um, so... That is the difference between those two types of slope. Those are the special cases. 
All right. Now let's get into graphing. Okay. There, I'm going to go through three different ways of graphing. There's one that uses the x and y intercepts. Now you've heard the y intercept before, that b, right? The x intercept is where it crosses the x axis. Okay? The y intercept is where it crosses the y axis. Okay? The special part about this is that we can actually find it in this form. Okay? The x intercept is when y equals 0. The y intercept is when x equals 0. So, we can just plug those numbers in. So, to find the x intercept, all I'm going to do is take this equation and plug in 0 for y. So, 3x plus 2 times 0 equals 6. Well, that 2 times 0, that crosses up. So, I got 3x equals 6, so x equals 2. So my x-intercept is 2 comma 0, right here. Now, my y-intercept is when x is 0. So I take that and I plug that in there. The 3 times 0, that crosses out. I have 2y equals 6, y equals 3. So my y-intercept is 0, 3. And I can plug that in. Now I have to slip my line out of those two points. So I can always use the x and y intercepts. And while we are accustomed to using y equals mx plus b, for other equations we're going to have to use this. So uh, this is just the the basic linear function version of graphing with the intercepts. Okay, uh, so that's how we graph with x and y intercepts. Now, uh, for example two, uh, oftentimes we don't know how to graph things uh, at first, so we make a table, okay? You can always make a table when graphing. So if we're graphing with a table, all we do is we create a table x, y, okay? And we choose like five points. And I generally choose negative one, negative two, zero, one and two. Those are always the good ones around the origin and we take those x's and we plug them in. So y minus two times negative two equals one. y plus four equals one. y equals negative three. Boom. There's a point. Two, a negative two, negative three. Negative two, negative three. Okay? And I would repeat the process each time and all I would do is substitute in the next number. 4x is uh, 2, and that is negative 1. So, negative 1. Boom. I plug in 0. That is 0. So, y equals 1. 0, 1, okay, 1, so this is a minus 2, so y equals 3, boom, okay, and this is going to be 5 when I plug it in, but I can always get that, okay, uh, and I can create a bunch of points and I can graph it on there. Now, what you also could do, and I'll jump down um, to 4 and 6 on your exercises, is use y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Okay, in this case, I have y equals 2x and there's an implied plus zero there. Okay, if you don't see the plus, it's zero. So that means that this line, the y-intercept is zero, so it's right at the origin. And then I use the slope, which is two, which if you remember, it's rise over run, okay, up to over one. And I can create 
that point without using a table. Uh, for linear functions, it's easier that way. But for later functions, we're not going to have uh, the y equals mx plus b to do that. The problem comes with problems like number 6, where I have to solve for y. It's not in that. This is called standard form. So we have to remember back into our equations review and solve for y. So the first thing I have to get rid of is this x. So I'm going to subtract x. They cancel out on that side. I'm left with 2y equals negative x plus 4. The reason I did that is so that x is before the b. Now I divide by 2. Now the trick is I divide each thing by 2. Okay? I get y equals, again, remember there's an implied 1 in front of that. So I can create a fraction out of this. Negative 1 half x plus 2, the 4 divided by 2. Now I can take that and graph it here. Okay, so my first step is to go to my y-intercept, plus 2. And then my slope tells me to go down 1 to the right 2. Down 1 to the right 2. And I can continue that out and create a few more points and graph it that way. So you can do it the variety of ways, okay? Um, get used to using a table. We're going to use that a lot later on. And get used to using the x and y intercepts. Those always work when graphing. If you're having trouble solving for y, always use a table. It's a little workaround, okay? So please uh, check the answers to the notes, okay? I'll have them posted on Edmodo. Um, and then when you're ready, there's a short learning goal quiz.